up early in the morning. It's 9.30 and we're about to move out. But it's raining. The gulls have nests all over the place here. The eggs not yet hatched. So they're making a lot of noise, warning us to stay away. The challenge I have today is to film Norway in the rain. Temperature a cool 8 degrees Celsius. And off we go, filming the mist-covered mountains. The fjords through the clouds. We're heading from Reina to the town of O, which is just about the end of the tourist trail. I have to say that though the weather was miserable, the day provided some things that were the highlights of our visit. O is the place to visit on a rainy day. The whole village is a museum, but there were many other fun things to enjoy. Now, O has the distinction, together with a French village named Y, of being the shortest place name on the planet. You can say O now, but please don't ask me why. It's actually the last letter of the Norwegian alphabet. This is O, and we're about to explore and though it was still raining, we were enjoying the experience. Before we go any further, let's take an aerial look at this fascinating place with a population of 250, not exactly a large village. The fishermen's houses, painted in Norwegian dark red, And as with many Lofoten villages, being held as it were in the hand of the sea, in the firm grasp of its fingers. Gunnar and I have interests that make traveling Norway together a delightful experience. He loves to tell me about Norway, the history, the culture, the ways of the people, and I am always fascinated and love to hear it. First stop, the great boathouse, complete with boats and woodturner's workshop. And a fine gentleman with whom we had an interesting conversation. The museum held all kinds of artifacts from days gone by. Clearly some had had their day. What was even more interesting was the wood creations we were able to film the making of an egg cup. He first took a piece of wood and shaped first the outside, then the inside, Then the outside again. And next it was sanded. And smoothed. And finally, beeswax was applied to it to protect the wood and give it a nice appearance. The finished product, about six dollars. So I bought a couple of things, great souvenirs or gifts, and excellent craftsmanship. Next up, the Dry Fish Museum. The weather allowing us a glimpse into what life can be like here, though well, this is the summer. Three days ago, it was snowing here. It was snowing. snowing here three days ago. Wow, we just missed the snow. Mm -hmm. 
still raining, we explored a little and went over to take a look. It's right in the center of O. Even the till was an antique. Entrance fee, six dollars each. So this is where the dry fish were produced. We'd already seen the fish drying on the wrecks. Here we saw what happened afterwards. One of the major problems in times past was preserving the fish and also being able to market the fish. The drying process made these things possible. The fish were compressed and packed in boxes ready for export, even as far as Africa. In fact, we were told that Nigeria was one of their largest markets. After looking around, we had a cup of tea and a biscuit and were able to see a film of the process. A very interesting visit. By the time we went out, the rain had stopped. Here one can also ride a boat to see the whales. Though the weather was not very conducive today. The gulls were in the nesting season and it seems the chicks will appear soon. Always a great place to stay. The Ruabut dot the coastline, providing superb views over the Atlantic. And right outside the door is the village. What's, what I like about these museums are showing daily life 50 years ago. Many of the older houses in the village are part of the museum. It's called the Norwegian Fishing Village Museum and this was the steamship expedition and post office preserved for us to see. For some of us, it was a case of remember when. We call these letter boxes pigeonholes in my youth. I'm gonna buy some stamps. Hello? Oh yeah, could I buy stamps please? No, we don't have any stamps today. Okay, okay. thank you. We are out. We'll get some back on the boat 12 o'clock this afternoon. Thank you. Back out into the street, our next visit was to a typical Lofoten home. The home of a fisherman living room with weaving machine and spinning wheel. In those days, home was a very practical place, but still a place of beauty and having a sea view, of course. Heating clearly important, a wood burner doing half the job, insulation doing the rest. In the kitchen, a wood stove. The last was an implement on which shoes were made and repaired. And we still use that same Norwegian word in English to describe the implement. On the wall, Psalm 37, 7, the houses are made of wood and need to be well insulated. The old Singer sewing machine, a staple. The room's not too large, keeping the place cozy. Every inch of space is used, and one might say, colorful. In the doorway, skis. This is snow country. What do you think of Lofoten? Dude, it's magical here. We've been here for three days. So the first day was very sunny, the second day was a little cloudy and today it's raining. So there were times uh, you feel you are living a dream. It, it's amazing here. A great couple from India were loving it and we had a chat. Next stop, cod liver oil factory. I still remember as a child taking the daily dose. That's why I'm so strong and healthy today. 
maybe. There's actually a manor house in the village, but apparently it was used as servants' quarters. One place both Gunnar and I wanted to visit was the bakery, as it was open, and inside, Agnes, the delightful baker, was serving croissants and coffee, and we had a chat with her. I love the old village logo. The bakery here is very nice, and uh, we decided to have a chocolate cinnamon roll, whatever it is, and enjoy the nice view. Very enjoyable it was too, but our visit was drawing to a close. No sunshine today, but the weather rather gave us a truer picture of what always like. I've been to many places and sometimes my reaction is this is different and I like visiting places that are different. Lofoten is certainly unique and we were getting the opportunity to see some of its many facets. In spite of the rain, it had been a great visit and thoroughly enjoyable. And yet, it's only three o'clock and there's still much to do.